Welcome back everyone and today we're going to be talking about a lens for Sigma 35mm f2 DG DN for L mount cameras. Is this $639 lens worthy of all the praise it's been getting? Let's talk about that right after this. Now, before we get started with this review, I do just want to say a huge thanks to Sigma USA for providing the lens for this review. With that said, I do just want to make sure that everyone understands that this is an independent review and that all of your views and thoughts about this lens are my own and I have not been influenced in any way. I also want to add that down below in the description there are affiliate links for all of the gear that I have used to make this video. If you use any of those links to purchase any gear, I will make a small percentage from that sale. Now, let's take a look at this 35mm Prime. Now, we all have our favorite focal length lenses, and I have to say that the 35mm focal length is one of my personal favorites. These are lenses that I have used throughout my entire career because of their versatility. I can slap one of these on my camera, and they're good for landscapes and cityscapes, environmental portraits, documentary work, event photography, you name it, if you have a 35 millimeter lens, you can usually take care of the job at hand. So I have to say, I'm really looking forward to seeing what this 35 millimeter F2 from Sigma can do. The Sigma 35 millimeter F2 DG DN is one of Sigma's new I series lenses. Sigma has released 24, 35, 45, and 65 millimeter variants. These new i-series lenses are technically Sigma contemporary lenses. However, they sit firmly between Sigma's more expensive art and regular contemporary offerings. There are some compromises, but we'll get into those later on. Now, let's take a look at the specs. The Sigma 35mm f2 DGDN features 10 elements in 9 groups with 9 rounded aperture blades that help create nice bokeh. The lens has a minimum focusing distance of 10.6 inches or 27 centimeters, and it has an aperture range from f2 to f22. The lens takes 58 millimeter filters, so just make note of that. There is a seal at the mount, and Sigma rates this lens as splash and dust resistant. Despite its metal build, the Sigma 35 millimeter f2 weighs in at just 0.71 pounds or 325 grams. The lens is available with Sony E and L mount and costs just $639. To start with, the lens feels absolutely fantastic in the hand. This contemporary lens feels like a really premium offering from Sigma. The manual focusing ring turns smoothly and the aperture ring clicks into place nicely. It is worth noting though that the aperture ring cannot be de-clicked, which I'm sure will not please some videographers. The only other control on the lens is a switch which lets you switch between manual and autofocus. Now, the lens does come with two lens caps, one standard lens cap and a magnetic one, which is different to say the least. The middle magnetic cap feels really nice and it does work well. Once it's attached to the lens, it feels secure. However, when you have the middle lens hood attached to the lens, the magnetic hood can be a little tricky to remove because you can't get your fingers in to pull the lens cap off. You also cannot use the magnetic cap if you have a filter in place, so just keep that in mind. Okay, let's talk about autofocus performance. I used the Sigma 35mm f2 DGDN with the Panasonic Lumix S5, and it has honestly performed great. I mentioned compromises earlier on, and well, one of them is that this lens uses stepping motors for the autofocus. Still, focus is swift and accurate in both single and continuous focus modes and in both good and low light situations. Focusing from near to far happens rapidly, as you can see here. The lens also works with human face and eye detection, as well as animal focusing as well. This lens is pretty impressive when it comes to close focusing too. With a minimum focusing distance of just 10.6 inches, you can really get quite creative with your shot. There are some issues though when it comes to using continuous autofocus. You will see pulsing. The pulsing happens when shooting video too. This will lead you to manual focus when shooting video, which leads us to focus breathing. The 35mm f2 DGDN does suffer from a fair amount of focus breathing, which you can see in this video here. 
Now, when it comes to using the Sigma 35 mm F2 DGDN, you're gonna find it's incredibly easy. If you're not a fan of changing the aperture via the aperture dial on the lens itself, you can just set it to A and then you can adjust the aperture with the camera body. Manually focusing this lens is also a piece of cake thanks to the smooth focusing ring. Combine that with focus peaking and you will be just fine. I really do wish that Sigma used a focusing scale on the lens barrel though as it would have gone nicely with its vintage look and feel. The lens doesn't feature image stabilization either but with the IBIS in the Panasonic S5, I had no issues hand holding this lens down to one fifth of a second. When shooting wide open at f2, you're gonna get images that are razor sharp in the center. When you look at the corners, you're gonna see a little softness, but you're only gonna notice it when you're zoomed in during post, or if you stand two inches away from a print, and honestly, who does that? At f2, you're also gonna see a slight vignette, however, Stop this lens down to f2.8 and the corners become much sharper and much brighter. The lens remains sharp down to f14 and then diffraction starts kicking in at around f16. Okay, let's talk about bokeh. Now, everyone has been crying foul because of the maximum aperture of f2. Well, earlier on we spoke about compromises and this is just another one of those compromises Sigma had to make. The smaller aperture meant that Sigma could keep both the size and the weight of this lens down, and to me, that is great. The L mount needs some smaller primes, and this fits the bill perfectly. 35mm lenses have never really been meant to produce crazy amounts of bokeh. Now, that's not to say that this lens can't produce bokeh, because it can, and honestly, the bokeh that it does produce looks very good. In fact, when you use the minimum focusing distance of 10.6 inches, you can completely obliterate the background. When it comes to the colors the Sigma 35mm F2 DG DN renders, I think most photographers will be very happy with the results. The lens doesn't produce overly saturated colors like many Sigma lenses have in the past. Colors are quite natural in fact, with only a slight hint of warm tones coming through. Chromatic aberrations are well controlled as well. That's not to say there aren't any, there are, but they can easily be removed during editing and you're also only going to see them during very extreme situations. Now, flares and ghosting are controlled pretty well too. Shooting into the sun will cause a fair amount of ghosting, but the lens hood does help cut this down. Okay, so is the Sigma 35mm F2 DGDN worth $639? I think yes, honestly. When you take into consideration the premium build quality over other contemporary lenses and the stellar image quality, $639 is a pretty fair price for this lens. The next closest lens to this is gonna be the new 35 mm f1.4 from Sigma, and then you have the f1.2, and then on top of that you have the 35 mm option from Leica. So at $639, this lens from Sigma is really a no-brainer if you want a small light prime that's gonna produce incredibly sharp images. Okay, well there you have it guys. Thank you so much for tuning into this review. I really appreciate it. And if you've liked this content, please make sure to hit the like button down below. I do have more lens reviews coming up here pretty soon. So if you'd like to see them, go ahead and hit the subscribe button too. Until next time, take care.